Hey guys, I'm Rosalvain, and welcome back to another episode of Yuppie Cycle. Where we last left off was we basically uh, went down to the ga gaseous, gaseous rooms. Uh, some of the areas that have gas that uh, required us to sort of sign a contract to kind of get into, and we finally did that. So now we're going to continue through that, apparently, because we didn't finish going through the whole space. Um, we just went through a part of it. In a weird way, let me see my. Let me double check my inventory. Yes, we did pick up a red machinery thing and gave it to Doshi, and he gave us a new lantern thingy, my bobber. But it says he did say that the thing requires more battery life, so I'm probably gonna try to avoid using it, if possible. I don't know if we can even. Uh, I don't know if I need to use it just yet or anything, but I, I'm hoping I don't accidentally use it. No, I don't want that, yeah. Too much too much light is too much light to me. Alright. Yeah, there was a green guy down there too. There was a guy who was like There was a guy who was like coughing up some crap and we should probably go back to that guy as well down there. In the previous episode we kind of met the guy. Alright. Yeah, I think the lip lady was like she probably saw me at first and then she just walked to she walked up to me a little bit there on the earlier part, so I need to Hope she didn't see me. I'm wondering how their a their AI works for this particular lip ladies. Nothing interesting here. Yeah, I'm wondering how the AI lady AI for the lip ladies are because uh, the way they seem, it's like they probably use like cone detection to so just like whatever. If they if you face in front of them, they will try to detect you and stuff. But all right, let's do, do the cubicle first because the cubicle was something that I saw first and I wanted to do it. Uh, wanted to get into it, but I was too afraid at that time. Uh, if it locks us, out, if it locks us out, we'll head over to the green guy, the guy with the green face. It looks like a house made of cubicles. Shall I go in? Yes. Oh, it's like a bar. Mister, wait. What? <laughs> Swery? <laughs> Why is Swery in this game? <laughs> okay, if you don't know who Swery is, he's a uh, one of the well-known Japanese developers. Uh, famous works that he's worked on is uh, D4. Uh, I think it was A Good Life, I think it's called, the, the newest title that he made. And uh, Deadly Premier Notion, I think, was the other one. The very, like, funny and cool... Japanese game. I haven't played any Swery games yet. Um, I've seen some playthroughs and let's plays of it, but I've heard how bad it is with some of the PC game version, the PC version of those games. I mean, I'm willing to dive into them, but the problem was that like I'm afraid that I might take too much time debugging through the technical stuff to play his games. I really want to try out his games, but the technical side of the the PC stuff it was a little bit tough for me um, from what I've seen from other people playing it, but. We'll see, maybe one day. One day, maybe I'll do Deadly Premier Ocean as the first step into his games, because I really want to try that out. I know Deadly Premier Ocean 2 came out, like, two years ago, one year ago, and it was, like, on the Switch or something like that, or on the PC, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, I'm surprised that the devs actually has his sort of name and imagery on <laughs> in the game. Uh, hey, amigo, welcome to my office. My name is Wary. H hello, my name is Brian. How are you, Brian? How's life? Could be better. Hey, is this a bar? Are you selling alcohol? At work? This? You mean my office? Oh, no, of course not. It's just a regular office cubicle. Why do you say that? Well, because of the bar, the bottles of alcohol, the music. You're even drinking a pitcher of beer right now. Oh. Ah, no, this isn't beer. It's... It's... P. <laughs> Wait, why? Why? That's much worse. <laughs> Just kidding, amigo. T. Te quiero. I think is what it says. You got us. We turned my cube. We turned my cubicle into a bar. We couldn't stand corporate work or that stench out there. This was my way out. Our our own way out. You mean you and that monkey? Yeah, sorry, I, I haven't not introduced you. Uh, this is Sharapova. She gives me a hand pouring beers and is the only one who remembers the cocktail measurements. Hmm. But tell us, what brings you here? 
It's my first day, and I'm exploring the building. The fourth floor is huge. You must be tired. Do you want a drink? A drink of chat, or, or of a chat? A bit of a chat? I will give you a penny for your thoughts. Thanks, but I'd rather not drink alcohol. It doesn't sit too well with me. Oh, right, you're underage. No, I'm not. It's just that we're on the clock, and this company is full of monsters, so I need to be on high alert all the time. Oh, that's right. This company is cursed. Do you know Forrest Kaysen's number the theory? Forrest Kaysen? I can tell you, but you have to have a drink first. See, that soda machine? I've rigged it to be cheaper than the regular ones. Every time you buy a soda, I'll tell you more about Forrest Kaysen and his number theory. Uh-huh. Interesting. It's a vending machine selling soda. I mean, it's pretty cheap, so sure, I guess. I guess you've noticed strange things happening in this building. I think I have a clue. As to what's going on, it all comes from the numbers. Numbers? Forrest Kaysen was a well-known American philosopher and ma mathematician in the 1960s. After returning from the war, he published a single book called The Mystery of Numbers. In it, he explained that numbers exert a force on the material world. Like, they're magic? Numbers that are good or bad luck? Sort of. He said that each number is a symbol and intrinsically carries a hidden force to the human being, which has shaped the history of humanity from almost its beginning. I feel like I remember hearing about number theory uh, from school. I just can't remember too much. I don't remember too deeply about that, but I remember for a fact that somebody has talked about it. I think it's maybe, maybe I might have taken a class talking about it. I haven't been sitting in a classroom setting in a long while now, so it's been like about... I'm not wearing a watch, but like three years now at this point, I think. No, two years. Yeah, it's like two years since I've graduated, I think. Yeah, it's almost two years at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm <laughs> my math, my time, literally staying indoors a lot, zips through my time brain, in my brain, so it's just like, I, I think it's three years, but it's actually two years been since I've been stuck inside, so. Um, the point is, graduated, and I haven't seen a math class in a while, so I guess that I kind of lost track of when I learned, or heard of number theory. But number theory, I think, is... Uh, a probability, probability statistic kind of thing or a crit critical theory kind of thing. I can't remember exactly. I know it's a, a very s important subject to talk about or go through for mathematicians and uh, some other stuff that is related to math, like physics maybe. I don't know. Anyways, let's keep going, going there. Forrest Kaysen's theories were so groundbreaking that the ca academics across the country publicly ridiculed him. After months of being locked up in his house, he was found dead hanging in his office. Next to him was a mysterious note. What did that note say? <clears throat> Nothing. There were no words. Just a list of numbers. I happen to have a copy of his book, and I think this building is being heavily influenced by the numbers. Pick a number, and I'll tell you what it means. Oh, wow. Oof. Uh, there's 11 numbers. Ugh. Which one would be nice? I'll take... Seven? Seven's a lucky number. Seven is a number with a great magic charge. The one with the most charge is the number of the wizards, of the good luck, of the festival meaning, festive meaning, of the good mood, also of the inspiration of the art. It is one of the numbers traditionally most related to luck and myth mysticism. It's a number that, although not perfect, makes it its defects wonderful. It's perhaps the most humane number. That's why this bar is number seven. Oh, yeah? Uh, how do you know? By the number of bottles, for example. But there's like nine bottles on the shelf and table, right? Hmm, no, it's not seven. Ah, maybe because of the beer mugs. Or the picture on the wall. Hmm, the chairs? No, there's five pictures on the wall. There's nine bottles of beer or alcohol. There's four mugs, three chairs. I don't think any of this area has any seven related. Maybe that flag has like a shape seven thing, but that's nothing beyond that. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm, no, nothing. There's everything in this bar but seven. 
Ah, well, that's why it's a 7, uh, because it's the only one missing. <laughs> mm. Okay, so I'm guessing we're gonna keep buying a soda until he tells us the rest of the story, I guess. The rest of the number theories. Pick a number and I'll tell you what it means. Okay, so we... I see. We had to buy his soda literally 11 times total. Ah, uh, oof. Okay, let's do two. Beware of two, Brian. The deuce is the worst number of all. It's the extreme example of even numbers. Hmm. It's do The deuce is pure evil. It is doubt and indecision. The number of in different paths. This two symbolizes the most profound human duality. The di diabolic mesmerism, mesmerism of the impossible symmetry. The profound fear of the unknown. The disturbing duplicity. Two Brian is, without doubt, the worst number of all. It's the god of evil. T two? Is, is it that bad? Don't be confused. Two doesn't mean two things alike. They're two exactly the same things. Two is a mirror. Okay. Pick a number and I'll tell you what it means. Oh, wow, okay. Well, I, I really have to go through all this. Uh, let's do ten. Why not? Number... Ten is a number of paradise. Unlike zero, it represents complete fullness. Ten is a whole, a white number saturated with light. It is a number of opulence, of the golden age, of glory. The ten is the hero who has already won, and so even if it doesn't know it, it's a lonely number. One that has achieved everything and has everything within its reach. I have... I, ha I thought it would be a better number. Ten, for all its superficial fame is a number full of memories and uh, melancholy on the un inside. Huh. Okay. I have a feeling... I, I have a strange feeling that all these lines are written, <laughs> written by Swery. Because Swery is the type of guy who writes some interesting stuff. Like, it appears at random at first, but then it feels kind of interesting at the same time. It's like... Trying to listen in on a game designer's theory. Okay, I'm not gonna read this again. I'm gonna... I mean, you get the point that he's telling us to pick a number. Um, yeah, let's choose four. Four is a bad number, and six is a pretty bad number, I feel like. Four is a fake number. It hides its weakness behind a facade of security and solidarity. It's a stationary number, and it never accomplishes anything. It is a pact between the four kings, where one of them betrays the other. It's an old, old castle that's in ruins and has never completely collapsed. It's a limp chair, and even if it holds your weight, it no, it'll break. Do you think there's any connection to this floor? Of course, the hive supports the whole company with its constant work, and yet it's rotten inside. When in, will it? When will it all fall apart? I, I have no idea. Do you? It's likely to have stayed this way forever. <laughs> okay, I guess. Got another soda. Actually, are these soda accumulating in my inventory? I just realized. All right, let me get some sip of water because I am getting a little thirsty here. I'll do six, I guess. Get all the bad numbers out of the way as quickly as I can. <clears throat> six is a number of the lie. A number that hides more than it teaches. It draws your attention to something, but behind that it's doing something else. It's usually related to the snake. It slithers quietly and without you noticing. It bites you and injects you. It injects its venom. Huh. Ah, it's a sex number too. Uh, the the. But but I'm not telling you that. You're you're still underage. I'm telling you, I'm of age. <laughs> Just kidding, amigo. Te quiero. Okay. Strangely enough, but okay. <laughs> One soda, every day. Um, nine. Let's go. Nine is an odd number that is not released to good, not related to good. It is a dark number. It's a number with a certain magic charge which remains on the sidelines. Nine is an impenetrable countenance, which seems to hide a great secret. Nine is the observer. It is a nobleman of in a black mask who stares at you without coming out of the shadows that hide him. It's an elegant and even sensual number. It doesn't take part in anything, even though it could. What a mysterious number. 
it gives you the impression, but it's really just a selfish number. It's just thinking about itself. I don't know if that's true though. Nine doesn't seem like a type of number that would think about itself, but sure. Um, zero. Let's do that. Zero doesn't exist. It's the void. It is neither good nor bad. It's neither even or odd. It's actually, in mathematics, we kind of count zero as even numbers. But to some small degree, we do count zero as not odd and not even sometimes. But oftentimes, I think they are considered uh, they consider zero as even number because it feels consistent because you have zero that lands literally between a two and a negative two as even numbers. So I mean, if it's sim like as he mentioned earlier, symmetry zero is considered the symmetry number, the the one in the middle. Or maybe the one in the middle, not at all, or something like that, I guess you could call it. Anyways, it is purgatory of numbers. It has no meaning. It is infinite. Zero is what you have lost and not realized. It's what's to come, but you don't know it yet. Hmm, what an abstract number. Zero is what in what's inside this beer mug before it's filled, or after I drink it. <laughs> uh. All right. We're closing in on like four last numbers, I think. Yeah. Eight. The eight is an exception to the rule. What rule? Normally, even numbers have a mal malignant con connotation, but the eight is the opposite. It's a number of goodness. It's a number of abundance. But from humility, it is community sharing with others. It is that older person who at first sight imposes, but who in reality has a heart of gold. It is an open temple without walls. Huh. Okay. I mean, 8 kind of sounds like... Like, 8 is literally infinity sideways. <laughs> but it makes sense when he said that it's humility. Because 8 is a humility number of infinity, almost. Because 8 has an actual value, while infinity doesn't. It's like... Like, it doesn't have a full, true value. Uh... So it's just interesting that he thinks it that way as well. I mean, I feel like Swery has some interesting thoughts in some of these things. I feel like most of his thoughts written in uh, Deadly Permanent Ocean also shows that a little bit. And it's kind of an interesting take on like how he wants his characters to think in a way when exploring a topic to some degree. I haven't really fully read them I've since watching the videos, like playthroughs back then. Um, I actually have no clue what the hell... Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I actually don't think I remember too much of what the games were like in Deadly Premonition and D4. Maybe D4 I slightly still remember, but a lot of it is weird to me in my mind because I can't remember too much. I'm trying to erase it so I can blindly play through it properly <laughs> when I come to it. Five. Five is a tight-knit team. It's a, te it's a number that can either move forward or stand still. It's the patience, the logic, the rational, the balance. It's a number with hardly any magic power that works because it's pieces to tight, fit tightly together, perfectly. Seems like a pretty balanced number. Too much. It lacks a soul. It's a function-focused number. Absep aseptic, boring. Maybe that's why I like it. I'm pretty boring myself. Then I'll give you a couple of shots. You and you go and dance onto the bar with Sharapova. Ha ha ha. No no no, that th there's no need. Alright, well we're down to the last two numbers. I'll pick a number and I'll tell you what it means. Technically the reason why I left these two kind of untouched is because these are my lucky numbers and my favorite numbers because they're like that to me, but that's why I chose them last, I guess. Three, let's go. Three is a strength is strength in action. It is an unstoppable and safe weapon that enters attacking and breaking everything in its path. It is indestructible, solid, compact, and sharp. It's a triangle and it has a great magical charge. The three can achieve anything. Sounds like a pretty good number. Is it the best one yet? It's one of the best, of course. Three has only has only one weakness. It's a number that suffers a lot of wear and tear, and it has a tendency to become a four. 
I never thought numbers could have so much personality. Neither did I. <laughs> Alright, last number, number one. I mean, there's nothing to pick, honestly, but... The easiest one. The one is the hero of the adventure. It's the sun in the sky. It's the arrow that sticks right in the center of the target. It's unique. It's the truth without any possibility of doubt. But it's also the authority, or the uh, loneliness, the strict and unchangeable. It's the ultimate expression of odd numbers. Odd numbers? In a very simplified way, we can say that odd numbers are numbers without positive connotations, and that even numbers are malign um, malignant, malignant numbers. Huh. I already told you the meaning of all the numbers. What do you think? Forrest came in. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Okay, I guess. Very interesting and weird. And you say the numbers are influencing the company? I mean... <laughs> Like, literally all the floors are numbered, so it makes sense that he's trying to represent the floors of the... The numbered floors of the uh, building, because there's all... This, there's this sort of, like, entirety of, like, different things that are there. Uh, that has this sort of, like, connotation to them, I guess. You tell me, amigo. You told me you've been scouting the building, right? Do you think these numbers symbolize the floors or the people in them? It's hard to say, I guess. In some cases, it's possible. These numbers are governed by numbers, but this company is at the mercy of them. I'm sure they play some part in all this. Alright, cool. I guess that's it for the bar. Hey, amigo, how's life? Meaning of the numbers? Okay, so we can just revisit that. If we wanted to hear his, uh, his wisdom of numbers. There aren't any drinks left. You know the meaning of all the numbers. If you want me to remind you, tell me, talk to me directly. Okay, so I'm wondering if those numbers have a representative like thing going on. I'm wondering what they would be. Oh god, I do have 13 soda. <laughs> I have too many soda now. I mean, oh no, then how, how much is my credit now? I only have 30 credits left. Oh, no. I spent so much money. Oh, my God. I s I'm so sad I spent all of that. I'll take the... Yeah, I'll, I'll live with my changes of... Uh, my commitment to getting all that money, I guess. Or commitment of getting all that soda. I'm, I'm going to save with the soda anyways. I'm not going to bother with trying to worry about, like... The money credits thing. I mean, the only credits I need to use to make sure I use them is the, uh, uh, they're there. Okay, good. I guess the range is not that far, which is a good thing, I guess. Alright, run, 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 no, 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 their faces are green. They must have been poisoned to death by the gas. Yeah, the guy in the guy with the green face is down here. Oh, wait, actually, did I? I want to double check this area so I can. Okay, I, I did go through that area and looted off everything. Let's see how this guy's doing. Oh, Jesus! That's so sad. How much health do I have? It's not that bad, I guess, but. I'll drink a soda. Might as well, I guess. No point in having so much soda now. Okay, so he just... It, just don't walk in front of him is basically the case, I think. Alright, so I need to go... This way? I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to... Oh, I see. I, I, I hurt myself by... Closing that off, closing that path off. So I see. So these guys are really just bad if we face in front of them. Okay, so these guys are like sort of like the obstacles kind of thing. Alright, cool. Um, I don't have any pencils, do I? No, I have two. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Scared me. I was like, oh no, I got no pencils probably. Alright, get rid of that crap. I wonder how far these guys can spit their vomit, but I'm hoping they don't spit too far. 
Oh, come on. I wasn't even that close to the guy. Dang it. Whatever. Alright, so it's whatever that is. I gotta push this guy. Oh, no, no, no. It's like, you can't, like... You can't tell if you're gonna be behind them or not. It seems like I lost the battery there. Yeah, I got eight batteries. Okay, I don't need to make sure, make sure that I have enough batteries still. Alright. Cool. Oh god, I gotta... Be careful here. He, I like how he's just still moving into the walls. Jeez. Oh, jeez. I, I gotta be careful with this dude. Okay, let me push him... This way. So he gets stuck there. Alright. Ooh, jeez. Okay, what is this... This red dots for? There are several dots... There are several dots painted with the red... With blood here. Six dots. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember what those dots are. I'm guessing this guy is like angry if you bump into him too much. Oh jeez! No 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 no! What are they? Are they gonna patrol that area? Yeah, it looks like they're just gonna keep patrolling that area. Okay. I have a lot of soda, so why not drink him? Use him as I can right now. I do see another table area here. Oh, jeez, there's another. Oh, this guy's actually looking around for once. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Drying noodles. That's not bad. I like that. Oh, and there's another videotape. It's a VHS tape titled Video Club Mysterio. Uh, yeah, Video Club Mysterio. The Wary Human Face. We got a VHS tape. Cool. Is there another space here? No, I gotta stay down here for a little bit. Until he turns around, I guess. Alright, at least we got that, I guess. Alright, I need to wait till those guys come back to make sure that the... Make sure that I can actually go in there properly. Ah, jeez. There we go. Is there really nothing going on here, really? Okay, I guess. Ow. Mm. Oh, God, I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. Sheesh, that was a really bad, like, idea, I guess. There was nothing over there, I guess. But that was weird to me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I guess I went the wrong way. Took the wrong turn. Oh, jeez, okay. Screw off, dude. Seriously? Hate the angry people, dude. I always don't know why they... I don't even know why the angry people needs to be a thing. Oh jeez, okay, I gotta move back a little bit. I hate that, dude. Seriously, stop it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to like do a job here, dude. Oh, I see. So I should have like, okay. Yeah, I need to to stay away from them for quite some time before they so they don't freaking bump into me like crazy. All right, now we actually go and get past those guys down there. Taking a lot of soda, but that's because I want to make sure I'm at an equal health sort of situation. Oh, great. Ah! Son of a gun. I hate it. I probably need to move some of them a little bit more further, but I didn't do it well anyways. There's a copier machine over here, so let's go and do that. Let's... It's empty. <clears throat> Candy bar, hey. Yeah, let's use it. Um, yeah, let's use the ink. I mean, I have a lot of ink cartridges anyways. What time is it? Oh my god, all that reading really took out a lot of time in this episode. 
All right, I will probably save here then. Let's, yeah, let's save. We did kind of go pretty far into this space, so I'll take the save here and kind of end the episode here. Um, thank you guys for watching. We got five pieces of paper. That's totally fine. I have to make sure I know I have like enough stuff to survive. Got some water, so that's good too. We can make a. S I mean, we can make a grilled cheese if we go back to the kitchen, but. Otherwise, nothing more, to be honest. Alright, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys in the next episode of Nobody Minds. Hope you guys have a great, amazing day. We can night to one of watching this. Next episode, let's continue deeper into this uh, fourth floor. Kind of through this gaseous, gaseous space uh, where we're trying to look for the dot matrix, I'm assuming. I think that's probably why the dots exist on that wall that we passed by earlier. So maybe that's part of the dot matrix thing where it's like, oh, it's a dot. How many dots there is on the wall <laughs> kind of thing. So there's like six dots, I guess. Um, but yeah, next episode, we'll go ahead and see what the hell this is all about. Can do deeper into this area and then see what we can find. And then uh, we'll probably head back to the fifth floor once we're done with everything here and do whatever we need to do. I mean, story wise, but we also have a videotape, so we'll probably go check that videotape in the next episode or the video or whenever the uh whenever we head back to the office space in the fifth floor so other than that that's it for this episode and uh see you guys in the next one if you guys continue to watch forward um also surprise to see swery just as a final note <laughs> but <laughs> i'm wondering i wonder how they got swery to feature himself into this game and write a little bit of the text for what he has to say i guess if he did write the text that is um yeah, anyways, on that, let's go. Roz, out. <laughs>